Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode and recap of this week's PC gaming news. We got another, uh, lots of stuff to talk about well this week. Uh, first of all, I want to take a look at the newly revealed MMORPG Bitcraft. This thing I think looks superb. Apparently it's a fully procedural sandbox MMO with farming, hunting, crafting, city building, and also focused on social and survival elements rather than combat. This sounds pretty neat. Uh, I'll also be covering the recent Age of Empires 4 stress test that took place. I played a bit of this myself and really enjoyed it. Basically it feels just like how I remember Age of Empires feeling. And to me, me, that was a good thing. We'll also take a look at the latest Warhammer Online update. Wait to hear about this one. Um, I want to talk about Eternal Crusades recent shutdown. We've got some more Guild Wars 2 coverage this week because I'm just obsessed with this game right now. And uh, some information on the upcoming Sea of Thieves update as well as a few other stories. It's a busy week. There's a lot to go into um, like every week, but I guess that's not surprising because it's a weekly recap. So of course there's lots of stuff to go into every week because it's a full week's worth of news. Why am I talking about this? Anyways, before we get into the stories, let's uh, quickly get a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by EVE Online. You guys probably know about this game. It's the community-driven space MMO that has just a wide variety of different things you can do in space. You can participate in wars, the game's politics, there's piracy and trading. They've got large-scale PvP and PvE activities, a player-driven economy, and the fact that you can explore across 7,000 star systems, all with hundreds and thousands of other players. Players. Now, EVE goes through these various quadrant updates, and their most recent update, which is called Gateway, brings with it an improved new player experience, as well as an update to the skill systems and a big visual overhaul. So if you want to jump in and check out EVE for the very first time, what's going to happen is you'll be taken through this brand new story-driven training experience. This is said to be a lot more immersive and detailed than anything they've had before, all of which is aimed at helping new players get their bearings. Gateway also brings with it skill plans, which are meant to streamline new player advancement and goal setting. And with both of these updates, they just look to help bring new players into and understanding the game in a more streamlined fashion, making now kind of as good a time as any to jump in if you haven't played EVE before. And if you're interested in checking out the game, you can go ahead and register using the link below. And as a bonus for doing so, you'll save three weeks of training time as you'll be getting a million skill points, which in turn will let you jump into the action quicker. Okay, so now let's go ahead and jump into to this week's top stories. The first thing I want to talk about is this brand new MMO. It's not every day that we get to talk about a new MMORPG, but today is one of those days. Last week, we got the reveal of Bitcraft, a sandbox MMO focused on encouraging many different playstyles. they say, from farming, hunting, and crafting, to city building and social strategy, rather than just focused and emphasized on combat like a lot of games are. The game looks to incorporate elements of various other subgenres as well, like survival, sandbox role-playing city building and strategy games and from what they've shown so far it looks like the basic gameplay experience is going to look something like this we're going to wake up in the wilderness as a blank slate and then build up experience uh in whatever we spend our time on so you can do various survival things like gather hunt eat and build shelter we'll also be exploring crafting trading and farming and they say there's a skill system attributed to all of this and your skills will improve as you use them which is kind of similar to like what they do say in elder scrolls Scrolls games. If you make a sword, you'll get better at making swords, etc. In the process of doing all the stuff, we will also come across other players. The entire game takes place in a single massive procedural world where we will see other people running around. We'll be able to work with them as we tame the wilderness, but also to create towns and cities anywhere. They say that it's an editable, edit, edible, not edible, editable sandbox where we can interact with and permanently change it. Although I do hope there are some handrails here because players if given unlimited access can be kind of cruel <laughs> with this type of thing they say the players are even going to be able to unite the cities that they build and make these empires that span across continents and oceans which is uh, where they claim there's going to be a lot of deeply social and strategic elements to the game now i want to quickly touch on the developer so bitcraft is being made by clockwork labs it's a studio that doesn't have any prior games to their name but apparently they're uh, made up of industry professionals 
individuals who have a deep uh, experience in building large-scale distributed systems. Not exactly sure if that's going to translate into a good game, but I mean, to be fair, their first trailer does look pretty good, so I'll give them some credit. And according to their website, um, they are fully funded as of now, apparently by not only a few groups, but also some uh, notable industry angel investors. I think Bitcraft sounds really neat. I like the art style from the first trailer they released. I think the system sound cool. I'm curious to see if there is going to be much combat. I know they said that the combat isn't the focus, but I still hope it's there, at least as like a side activity. Um, as you're going about doing survival things and exploring in M MMOs, having the threat of encountering creatures with some sort of difficulty and potential to take you out or whatever adds a lot to the world. I mean, heck, even Minecraft has enemies and uh, and some emphasis on combat. So hopefully combat isn't completely 100% put to the wayside, even if it's not going to be the main emphasis. But overall, uh, I'm going to be keeping my eye on Bitcraft. I think the game does look pretty interesting. Uh, next up, let's talk about Age of Empires 4. This past weekend, they held a stress test event. It ran from the 17th to the 20th. Now they say the stated goal of this was to test network load, stability, and other systems ahead of launch. Obviously though, besides that, it gave players a chance to get an early hands-on look at the game. Now I played myself for a couple hours. I have to say I really, really enjoyed it. Honestly, if you had told me that this was the original Age of Empires or Age of Empires 2 at just like an enhanced edition, I would totally believe you. Playing this felt just like how I remember playing those games felt when I was a kid. In fact, it's been so long, I don't remember any of the specifics about these games at all. But when I sat down to play last weekend, it was it was just like I remember these games, really. They made that game. Congratulations. So, you know, you start off with a town hall and you got some workers and then you send them out to harvest food, wood, stone, and gold. You then use your scout to check the map for the enemy and other resource and holy spot locations. And then you start building homes and military stuff. You get the resources to upgrade your ages, etc., etc. And then you mass up a giant army, attack move across the map, your way to victory, which is exactly what I did. I played a game versus the AI and a real player, and I won uh, both of them and quit. So I've got a 100% win rate. I am the best player in the world. It was cool. I had a good time. Uh, some notes about the game's various features. According to their website, they say Age of Empires 4 has both familiar and innovative new ways to play. It's going to support 4 4K resolution, if you've got capabilities for that. Uh, there are eight civilizations with four campaigns and 35 missions that span 500 years of history from the Dark Ages up to the Renaissance. Mods will be available starting in early 2022 for some user-generated content and custom games. There's multiplayer letting you compete, cooperate, or spectate with up to seven players in various modes. And there's going to be a tutorial that teaches the basics of RTS games, as well as a campaign story mode that can be good for first-time time players or also provide a challenge for veteran players. I'm assuming they mean with various difficulty modes here. And the game will be officially launching on October 28th. I gotta say again, after the preview, I really enjoyed it. I think I'm gonna have to give this uh, thing a look. Here's an odd story, Warhammer Online just recently got some brand new content. Yes, the same Warhammer Online that was officially shut down in 2013. Well, the game resurfaced shortly after its closure by way of Return of Reckoning, this non-profit server that was operated and maintained by fans of the game. Now, these private servers have been active for several years now and even have seen some increase in popularity quite recently with a lot of nostalgia for that game apparently kicking in recently. Helps that some MMO YouTubers were covering it as well. Well, after a bit of time, they decided not just to maintain the base game as it was, but to actually add to it. So last week, Return of Reckoning got a major update where they recreated, developed, and released the home cities of the Dwarfs and Greenskins. These were locations that were previously never released. Apparently, a lot of the work was completed for these areas, but just never made it into the full game before it was shut down. Well, the Return of Reckoning team got access to those files, and they were able to finish the work and add it back into the game. This is kind of amazing to say the least that this old shutdown MMO running on private servers for the past seven years is getting a major update. Apparently this is just the beginning as well. Uh, the Return of Reckoning team says that they have plans to implement a new siege system, a new zone, the land of the dead, and they also plan to implement some of the missing dungeons that never made their way into the game. I'm not sure how solid of a ground this sits on 
like legally speaking, it's probably one of those situations where they'll keep working on it until someone who owns the rights uh, tells them they have to stop working on it. But from a game's preservation perspective, I think this is fantastic, amazing. I hope they can keep going. And since we're talking about Warhammer, let's cover the recent 40K story. I'm talking about Eternal Crusade, the online multiplayer third-person shooter that launched in 2016. It is no more. The game was shut down earlier this month on September 13th. Now, this may not come as a surprise to you. In fact, in fact, I suspect many of you have never heard about this game. When it was released, it landed with a thud and never seemed to improve. It was buggy, glitchy, laggy, ugly, and simply put, just wasn't a good game. Now, what makes me sad here isn't that Eternal Crusade shut down, given how bad it was. I'm sad because this reminds me that this was the game that was supposed to be a fully fleshed out Warhammer 40k space MMO. The original pitch was this will be like Star Wars The Old Republic or the World of Warcraft, but as a Warhammer 40k game and in that universe. And funnily enough, uh, Warhammer was the direct inspiration for Warcraft and 40k the direct inspiration for Starcraft. But that's a whole nother story, which we won't get into in this video. But yeah, back around 2014 or so, I remember making videos talking about this newly revealed 40k MMO that was in the works. However, partway through the development, they changed course and the game turned into a rather generic, bad even, a third person shooter and really wasn't much of an, a traditional MMO that we we consider. I just gotta say, I'm constantly let down by these MMOs that were being made in development, but never actually completed. EverQuest Next, Blizzard's Titan, the Amazon's Lord of the Ring MMO, Firefall, that Kingdom of Amalur MMO, there's that World of Darkness game that was supposed to be getting made. Just all of these like specters of what could have been in my favorite genre. It's such a shame. And next up, I want to talk some more about Guild Wars 2. I'll apologize here as well. I know this is like the fifth video in a row where I'm talking about this game. Frankly, I'm just obsessed. I've been playing this recently nonstop, just about every day. At the very least, I've been recording, so I hope to turn this into a video at some point. But for the time being, let me just say I really enjoy this game. I recommend it if you haven't played it before and if you also like MMOs. Or maybe if you did play it, say you played at launch but you never saw the expansions from what little i've already seen of heart of thorns it's just been super impressive like a big step up not only in the zone design but also in its introduction of brand new mechanics that were not in the base game anyway the recent news about this game besides my obsession with it is um as i've covered a few times they've got a new expansion coming out next year the end of dragons and with it they're adding new elite specs for every class well this past week they showed off uh three more class uh elite specializations First, there's the Vindicator. This is the Revenant spec. It's gonna let them use great swords that can unleash these big attacks. He's got this new leap attack, which looks really cool. And apparently this is also like channeling powers from fallen heroes. I don't know, apparently this has something to do with Revenant lore. The Blade Sworn is the warrior specialization, giving them access to pistols, this gun saber, which I think the gun saber is like a brand new weapon in general. But anyways, it's a sword and a gun and warriors along with this are also gonna have this new resource to play with. And then finally, Finally, there's the Catalyst. This is an Elementalist specialization. It lets them use two-handed maces along with these Jade Tech Spheres that can enhance and alter their attacks. This is a melee spec for the Elementalist and the animations here are just super cool. Really, really like this. As of right now, there's a beta test where you can try out these elite specializations, although you should know this ends pretty soon on September 25th, so you don't have much time. But yeah, you can check it out or you can wait till next year when the expansion happens. And also recently I did hear some news that apparently they plan on finally adding DX11 support to Guild Wars 2 at some point in the future. They say that this is not only going to help the game's performance, it apparently will also be a uh, the first step towards them being able to do more shiny things, they say. I'm assuming they're talking about like making bigger graphic overhauls, which as much as I'm loving Guild Wars 2 right now, the early zones, especially the starter zones in this game, really show their age. It looks super dated. I love the game in general. I love the game's look in general, but the newer expansions just look phenomenally better than what the base game does. I would love to if the whole game got just like a base visual overhaul. But anyways, I digress. Guild Wars 2 is really awesome. You should play it. Uh, moving on, let's talk about Sea of Thieves. They've got some new content on the way. The upcoming season four update will be adding new underwater location of the Sunken Kingdom. They're going to be these new siren shrines that sound like enemy players, apparently. That's kind of 
cool. Coral treasures, these mirrorfolk statues where you can store treasure underwater. There'll be these new message in a bottles that will send you to find rare treasures. There are going to be some new ship parts and weapons to unlock, as well as new emissary rewards. Sea of Thieves is a really cool game. I really liked it when I played it at launch. I was one of my few friends who stuck with it for multiple weeks. I just thought the world looked great. It was fun to play in and the ship sailing and dealing with other player ships and trying to board them and getting boarded. The whole experience was really fun. I do still dream of like Sea of Thieves, the RPG though, a game with loot and classes with abilities and spells. I know that's not what Sea of Thieves is trying to be or ever what it was trying to be, but I think it would be really cool, a game like that. Maybe their next game that they're working on, Everwild, will be that very thing. I don't know, we'll see, but yeah, anyways. So those are the big stories from this week. Um, let's touch on a couple of other things. Uh, first off, we got a the first gameplay trailer for V Rising. I think this looks awesome. I just made an entire video dedicated to the game if you want an overview of like everything we know so far. But to sum it up, V Rising is a vampire survival game. It's set in this gothic open world that has exploration, building, crafting, and top-down combat. Now the studio making it is the same one that made Bloodline Champions and Battle Right. In fact, they say gameplay-wise it'll play very similar to how Battle Right did, but it's set in this open world with like RPG mechanics. So you start off uh, as a freshly risen vampire uh, getting up from your coffin with no powers. Then you have to go out and fight for survival while trying to build yourself back up. You'll obtain new unholy abilities, you'll craft armor and weapons, and take on various dangerous enemies as well as the environment, because sunlight will burn you. You're a vampire after all. The world's going to be full of NPCs as well as players and offers both PvP and PvE activities. You can play solo or make a clan with up to three of your friends. You'll have to build up your vampire cast hunt in different areas like villages, caves, and various holy sites, and you'll also have to take on enemy vampire players and their clans. All around, the game sounds really cool. I'm looking forward to it. We just got the news that the hardcore PvP full loot MMO Mortal Online 2 got delayed. The game is now planned to fully release on January 25th, 2022. Basically, they said that they're close to adding all of the features and content that they had planned for the full release of the game, so they're no longer gonna release in early access, which is what they plan to do this fall. They're just going to keep on going, keep adding stuff, and then just fully release in January. I guess we'll see how that goes. I mean, I heard decent things from the people who played the latest uh, playtest, but frankly, the footage I saw left me less than an I'll reserve full judgment until I actually play it, but and I hope it turns out well, but things were still looking kind of janky from all the gameplay footage I saw. Maybe it wasn't early enough. I don't know. We'll wait and see until it finally comes out in January. And uh, finally, remember Palia, that very endearing looking social MMO that was revealed earlier this year? Well, apparently they just finished up their first pre-alpha test and it went well. Uh, this was a very limited event with a fairly small number of players invited. Now from it, the developer apparently got a lot of feedback and they shared that as well as a bunch of screenshots of the game on a post on their website. The game looks great. I love the style. And just like Bitcraft, the game we talked about earlier, this is also an upcoming MMO that has a big emphasis on the social elements of the genre. I think this one in particular though, Palia, is especially great looking. It clearly is far along in development and coming along very well. Um, I hope we get the chance to play it very soon. And lastly, I want to just uh, touch on some of the recent launches and betas and what's coming up here. Uh, so first off, we just saw the release of Deathloop and Kenna Bridge of Spirits. Both of those games did very, very well critically. Like the critic reviews are pretty strong for both titles. Although interestingly enough, the user reviews for Deathloop are quite a bit more mixed at least from what I saw on Metacritic. It was like about half negative reviews. Uh, things are looking better over on the uh, the Steam uh, user reviews, but still in general, there does seem to be a little bit of negativity around Deathloop. I'm curious, I haven't dove in too much to this one. It seemed like s some people just really didn't love the story and how that all plays out. But anyways, yeah, Deathloop and Kenna, great critical reviews at least. Uh, Call of Duty Vanguard just had the beta recently. I was hoping to jump into this, but didn't end up getting the chance, unfortunately. Uh, at the very least, I'll probably want to see whatever they do for the Vanguard update to their Battle Royale game. Like, are, is that going to be a thing? Are they going to just go World War II with their Battle Royale that's been modern military basically up until this point? Diablo 2 Resurrected is also launching this week. Um, as of this recording, it isn't out yet, but it'll be launching very, very 
very soon. I'll be interested to see how that does. I mean, it's Diablo 2. We pretty much know what to expect. The big question is, does the port live up to people's expectations? Is it good? Does it have all the features you expect? Does it run well? And then finally, I can't not mention next week we are seeing the launch of New World. I've been waiting on this game forever <laughs> and it's finally coming. I'm really, really excited. I'm going to jump in. I'll probably hit it hard for at least a few days initially and then I'll pump the brakes. I'm trying, I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to make sure I don't burn myself out. And I also, like I've talked about a lot here, there's a ton of other games right now and coming in the near future that I'm going to want to spend some time with. So no, I won't be just playing New World for months on end. And you know, the last time I talked about this, every time I talk about it, I get comments like, oh, you're only planning to play New World for a few weeks or a month. Uh, man, like MMOs must suck nowadays. It's like, I just can't, I don't play any game anymore for like six months straight. I just don't do it. I like to play a lot of games. I, I want to play every MMO and I want to revisit a lot of the ones that I played in the past. Like this year, I'm playing Guild Wars 2 right now. I want to get ready for the Final Fantasy 14 expansion. I would like to go back to ESO. There's just a lot of stuff, you know, and all those things require a lot of time. I'd love to check out Destiny 2 again. There's there's just a lot of games. The point point being, I'm not going to spend more than a few weeks with any video game ever again. I still love MMOs. That doesn't change the fact I'm just not going to only play one MMO perpetually anymore. I know that might be like sacrilege for the genre and how it's supposed to be played, Whatever, I'll play games how I want, okay? <laughs> and with that, <laughs> we're gonna wrap up today's episode. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate your support. Hope you continue to enjoy the content. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one, all right? Take it easy.